Hi, my name is Joseph Aribido. I'm a PhD student with the Center for Energy and Geoprocessing, led by Professor Gassan al rajib at the Georgia Institute of Technology. The title of our paper is Self-Supervised Annotation of Seismic Images Using Latent Space Factorization. There are several motivations for self-supervised learning in seismic interpretation. One of these is the scarcity of publicly annotated seismic datasets. In comparison, computer vision-based applications enjoy a huge number of labeled datasets. For instance, ImageNet here has about 1.4 million publicly labeled images. The F3 block, a popular seismic dataset, has only 1,500 labeled sections publicly annotated. This disparity is a motivation for self-supervised learning in seismic. Another motivation is the difference between natural images and seismic images. Natural images have a distinct boundary in their localization compared with seismic images. For instance, in this image here, the boundary of a car are nicely delineated. However, in seismic images, the boundary between seismic faces is not clear and distinct like you have in natural images. As such, this is another reason why domain expertise knowledge is required in seismic labeling and annotation. Hence, self-supervised learning is a motivation here as well. In a, in a supervised learning framework, an interpreter labels part or all of a 3D seismic volume and partitions them into training and test set. This is expensive and laborious. For instance, in this image here, we have an interpreter labeling part of the seismic fishes of a section of the F3 block. This is expensive because of the number of years of experience required for an interpreter to be able to label seismic uh, sections correctly. These labeled or annotated sections are passed with respect to their corresponding seismic sections into a machine learning model to get predicted seismic sections. These seismic sections are then combined into a labeled seismic volume. The labeled sections are trained in a machine learning model to predict sections of another data set or sections of the same data set. And those can be combined into the volume shown here. In our self-supervised learning framework, we want to feed a raw seismic image and be able to detect important geological structures in this raw seismic image. As shown on the right, we want a self, our self-supervised algorithm to be able to detect important structural features in various sections of the F3 block, then combine these various sections into, the, into a, a volume. Here we have a chaotic structure, a salt dome, and false labeled. This is the kind of annotation we desire our self-supervised algorithm to be able to give. We are going to show how to do this using the latent space. In a classical encoder-decoder architecture, an input patch image is fed into an encoder, then a latent space is obtained, which is passed into a decoder to obtain a reconstructed image. The latent space has been shown to contain very rich spatial information about the input data. However, the characterization of the latent space remains an open research problem. In this framework, we desire to show that the latent space can be partitioned into two categories. Each of these categories will be used to identify the foreground or the important geological structure in the input image and differentiate that from features corresponding to the background of our seismic data. To solve this problem, we take patches from the F3 block, from various sections of the F3 block. These patches are actually labeled because they are taken from the landmass data set shown here. Although these patches are labeled, we do not use the labels in the training. 
the training of our algorithm is completely self-supervised. The training to detect what is background or foreground or what belongs to a geological important structure in each image patch is completely supervised. For instance, we desire our algorithm to be able to detect important structures in the image and separate that from the background. In this sort image, we want our algorithm to be able to identify either important boundary information or important geological structural information and differentiate that from regions that do not have the same, which we label as background. To, we train an encoder-decoder architecture by passing input image into an encoder. The encoder transforms the input features into some high dimensional data. This vector, or are known as a Latin space, is, 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 is labeled as Z. Z is passed into two projection matrices. Projection matrix P1 projects the Latin space to Z1. Projection P2 projects the, this, the same Latin space to Z2. Hence, we have two orthogonal projections from various pro, from projection matrix P1 and P2. Projection Z1 is passed into the generator to obtain a representation. Z2 is passed in, in the same order into, another, into the same generator to get another representation. Both representations are X1 hat and X2 hat respectively. The difference between X1 hat and X2 hat is found and an L1 sparsity loss is imposed on such difference. The, the reason is to learn a specified annotation between X1 hat and X2 hat. Essentially, we desire X1 hat and X2 hat to be different enough to identify interesting regions in the input image when an L1 sparsity norm is imposed on their difference. However, X1 hat and X2 hat ought to be possible seismic images as shown here. Hence, we introduce a reconstruction of X1 hat and X2 hat to be a kind of cycle consistency with the input image. Let's talk a little bit about how we construct the projection matrices. At the start of training, we implement two fully connected layers with input 1,024 neurons and output 1,024 neurons for P1 and P2 respectively. To ensure both matrices converge to projection matrices, we impose a projection matrix constraint on P1 and P2 to make them idempotent, which is the first part of the loss function. This part ensures the projection of P1 onto itself equals P1 and the same with P2 as well. The second part of the loss function ensures both P1 and P2 are orthogonal to each other. After training, both matrices P1 and P2 become sparse with respect to their row space. For instance, P1 lends a row space that corresponds to the background. P2 lends another specified row space information that corresponds to the background. And both of these are able to project orthogonally the Latin space to a space where the row features are able to lead to the reconstruction of X1 hat and X2 hat as shown in the previous slide. The loss is appended to the objective training or construction loss between the input and the output and the optimal P1 and P2 is found using gradient descent during training. Here we show predicted annotations of important geologic features synthesized from X1 and X2. Notice in all classes of images selected, the algorithm delineates out the most important geologic region. X is our input image. X1 hat is the first synthesized image from Z1. X2 hat is the synthesized image from P2 projection matrix. We calculate the mean square error between both matrices as well as the reconstruction and show that the reconstruction by combining X1 hat and X2 hat is actually less than the individual reconstruction of X1 hat and X2 hat which means that X1 hat and X2 hat are actually factorizations of X. When we look at the L1 norm of the difference between X1 hat and X2 hat, we get the representation shown here, 
which is our desired output. We can further threshold this output to take out the on to take out the smaller values to get a nice representation of the most important information in the image. X1 minus X2 can be thresholded at various levels to give confidence values that are either conservative or well elaborated representation of important geological structures in X. Here we show the result of our model on four classes. We apply the output annotation in the previous slide to each image to label the identified structures. Notice that the unsupervised Latin space factorization model delineates the corresponding structures in each image. The annotation gives values from zero to one, where one is very certain and zero is less certain. In some instances, the labeling, the annotation can be very noisy because our model is self-supervised. Self However, in some cases, it detects neatly regions of interest as shown in the fourth class and the salt class as well. However, in some cases, as shown here, it could be noisy. And in some cases, it could be in between, but being very noisy and being conservative, as shown in the chaotic representation here. We compare our results to itself to a weekly supervised framework by Alauda. Here, Alauda shows the labeling using a weekly using a weekly supervised framework to show the labeling of all four classes. In some cases, the self the weekly supervised framework labels um, it's it's a little less conservative than our own labeling. Our labeling many times is associated more with the edges of the structures. However, in the labeling of the sort, in both cases, the labeling is the same by both the self-supervised and the weekly supervised. We extend the patch-based result to seismic sections. We train a segmentation model using pixel labels from the image patches to predict on full sectional labels. Notice here that four structures are delineated the, re the horizon regions are clearly shown here, and the chaotic region and the salt region is factorized out. The same thing with the chaotic region. The chaotic region is shown here. The salt is factorized out as well as the horizon, and same goes with both images as well. This shows that our algorithm actually factorizes the, uh, the, the, the input image into various sections. This is consistent with the 3D representation uh, shown when we show the 3D representation of our image as well. We can compare our method also to attributes, extraction model in the seismic literature. Here we have six attributes, 3D gradient of texture, saliency, GLC, and 2D gradient of texture, instantaneous amplitude, and phase congruency. The performance of our algorithm to delineate important regional structures is, is, is neater and cleaner than many of the seismic attributes in popular literature. The phase congruency performs similar, however, our representation is less noisy than the phase representation uh, attributes. In summary, our, cons our contributions are as follows. First, we're able to factorize the Latin space onto orthogonal subspaces using land projection matrices. Secondly, we're able to learn important geological features and seismic images in a self-supervised framework. Thirdly, we're able to use the land features to factorize the volume into various parts. Thank you for listening. Our website contains further work on seismic images, both weekly supervised, fully supervised, and self-supervised. The website is shown here, and this paper has been extended into a journal of which the citation is also given here as well. Thank you.